Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, yesterday I was shooting this uh, Palmetto AR-15 with this primary arms uh, one to eight variable scope at 400 yards. And today I brought back my target um, so that I can assess it. Okay, so I can basically uh, see what happened and you know see what I can learn from this and also record this data so that I have it for myself for future reference and also you guys can also uh, benefit uh, from it yourself. Okay, so uh, so this is all budget stuff. This is all the time stuff. This AR-15 that you see here, uh, the rifle was four, was five hundred dollars when I bought it. Right, five hundred dollars. The scope with the mount was four hundred dollars when I bought it. Uh, nowadays, you may end up paying an extra fifty dollars because of the inflation and that nonsense. Uh, but this is we're talking budget stuff here. Okay, now I did a video on this Palmetto rifle um, where. Uh, I, when I tested it for accuracy at 100 yards, uh, it came in at an inch and one quarter, right? So it's a 1.25 MOA rifle. Now today, um, I you know I, I shot it again at 100 yards, and this is I only took three shots so far today, right? This is the only three shots I took today, and it came in again at an inch and one quarter. Okay, so this rifle from Palmetto. Uh, that I paid five hundred dollars for is is shooting very consistently a one point two five inch group uh, with cheap target ammo. Okay, so imagine if we get some match grade stuff in there. So anyway, I got my target here, and uh, what, I, what what I did yesterday, I set this up at the uh, four hundred yards, and I took now mind you, the day before I had I had gotten a perfect zero, where my bullets were basically pretty much hitting the bullseye over here, right? Um, so I took, I set up at 400 yards, um, prone position with a bipod. I did not have the back of the rifle bagged, so it was kind of like I was trying to hold the back with my hand. The next time I go out there, I'm going to take a bag with me so I can actually bag the back of the rifle on the, you know, because uh, I think that's going to give me even a much better group. Okay, so uh, I took five shots, and what I saw is that um, it hit here and here. So only two of the five shots got on the paper. The other three were someplace off to the left and low. Okay, so these two shots gave me that information that I'm, I'm hitting low and it looks like I'm going left. So what I did is I adjusted the scope. Okay, I went uh, two clicks up and then two clicks uh, to the right. Okay, um, and what I did is I took another five shots and I've marked them here in red. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is a total of 11 inches at 400 yards. Okay, um, so this is so that's great. I, I would I I would have liked to adjust it another clicks over to the right and take another five shots, but I kind of ran out of time. Um, so that's fine. I'm here today. I got, I got a lot more time today. And what I did is I said, hey, the adjustments that I made, let's take this back out to the 100 yards and let's see where I hit, okay? Um, so, I, so basically I took this out to the 100 yards. I just took three shots. And remember, I went up two clicks, right two clicks, and I'm, I landed over here, okay? So, so I'm, I'm, over, I'm off to the, to the right over here. Uh, so we got some really interesting information here. Um, the first piece of information is that since today, because obviously the, the wind is not going to have that much of a chance to impact my bullets. Um, obviously, the the initial the zero that I had yesterday was correct, and it was the the, the wind that had pushed my bullets to the left. Okay, um, so it's not like my scope had had moved or lost zero or anything. Um, because, to, because when I adjusted it to the right, today when I came and I shot it, I'm way off to the right here. Okay, if I, if I was back, if I was in the center, then I would have been worried. I would have said, okay, this, is, this scope's not holding zero. Uh, but it came over to the right, which means that now I gotta adjust this two clicks back to the left, so that at 100 yards, it will be centered. Okay, so the way this type of a scope is meant to be used, right, the one that has the ACSS reticle, uh, you're not supposed to, um, uh, dial in adjustments at the turns. Okay, so, the, so these 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 turns um, are capped. 
So you're supposed to get a zero at 100 yards, and that's it, right? You're done, and then uh, you're supposed to use the reticle to make your wind adjustments or your elevation adjustments for distance. You're not supposed to start fumbling with the dial. Uh, and again, this is one of the things that I'm that I'm working through, and I'm trying to build up some confidence and know that this is how this is going to work and that it will work. Um, so, so basically, this is going to have to go back to where it was, right? It's going to go two clicks to the left, and the next time I'm out there, I have to pay attention, better attention to the wind. And basically, if it's pushing, uh, you know, if it's pushing to the left, I got to use the radical to adjust over to the right. And we're going to talk about more of that in a minute. Uh, but, that, but what I want to do is I want to talk about the elevation adjustment because if you notice over here, right, um, the day before, right, uh, I had put my chevron right underneath the, the bullseye here and I was pretty much impacting on, on the bullseye. But the, but the thing is, at 400 yards, I was hitting a little bit low. So it's better for me to keep this at 100 yards to keep it at this elevation because here's the thing remember if you got a 50 yard zero on the rifle that has a just like a two-way dot uh you got a 50 yard zero at 100 yards you're going to be like three to four inches high and then at 200 yards you drop that back down for your second zero so you're already comfortable with the idea of being three to four inches high at 100 yards i mean this is actually an improvement because i'm only my so with this scope, with this setup, I'm only two and a quarter inches high at 100 yards. So, so this is fine. I, I, I'm perfectly okay with being two and a quarter inches high at 100 yards, uh, and that will give me the ability to basically get, you know, get in the center um, at 400 yards. Okay, so that's where I'm going to keep that. So. Uh, this data is really important because I want to. I'm doing this video so that in the future I can come back to this, right? Uh, because th this is now a 16-inch barrel right? because because these numbers might change if you or are going to change if you got a different length barrel, different weight bullet. Okay, uh, so on a 16-inch barrel with a 55 grain bullet, okay. Um, when I zero in my ACSS reticle at 100 yards, I want to be an, where am I? Uh, two and one quarter inches high, all right? Two and a quarter inches high, which will allow me to get in the center at 400 yards, okay? Um, and that's where that's gonna stay. Now, as far as the wind, uh, this reticle has, does have wind holes uh, in the in the ladder, there's a ladder underneath it. Now, one of the things I don't like about the ACSS reticle, it's probably the only thing I don't like about this particular one, um, is that the wind holes are for five mile per hour wind. Okay, uh, I would have preferred that it was for ten mile per hour wind, and the reason is if it's for a ten mile per hour wind, well, if you've got a five mile hour per hour wind, you could just cut you know cut the distance in half. Or if you've got, let's say, a 20 mile per hour wind, well, you can just double it, right? So it's really, it's a lot easier to work off of uh, a 10 mile, you know, 10 mile per hour, um, uh, you know, wind markings on your reticle versus five. Because now with the five mile per hour wind, I mean, great. If I've got a 10 mile per hour wind, okay, great. I got to double it. All right, that's easy. That's, that's it. That you, can, you can easily visualize that in the reticle. But now if you've got a 50 mile per hour wind, you've got to triple that. That distance, right? That now that starts to get a little bit more difficult. A little bit, you know, if it's a 20 mile per hour wind, now you got quadruple that distance. Uh, so, so now there's a greater chance for error. So that's why I would have preferred uh, that the wind holds in the ACSS were at 10 miles per hour instead of five. So that all I gotta do is either cut in half or double it. You know, depending on if I ha if I got a five mile per hour wind or a 15 mile per you know per hour. Well, no, yeah. If I, if I got either a, a five mile per hour wind, I would double it. Uh, and if I had, let's say, a, a, a 20 mile per hour wind, I would double it. And if I'm somewhere in the between, in between, I can I can cut it, cut that distance in half. So I, I I think it's a lot easier to work with 10 mile per hour wind holes versus five. Now I think the reason they went with five is because I think that they're thinking that. Most people aren't crazy enough to be shooting 
when the wind is like, you know, 10, you know, 15 to 20 miles per hour. I mean, they don't know me, but <laughs> I think that's the reason why they went with the five mile per hour when they're probably thinking that most people uh, might be shooting, you know, from, you know, they're more likely to be shooting if it's three miles per hour. So if they're with the five mile per hour wind holes, they can cut it in half, you know, to get to like two and a half miles or three miles per hour. Um, or, they might, or they're probably thinking that the most people will shoot in is a 10 mile per hour wind. So I think that's the reason why they went with the five mile per hour uh, wind markings um, as opposed to the 10, which I would have liked to see. But anyway, um, the point here being that, that I kind of, I figured out where I want to be as far as elevation. Like when I zero in at hundred yards, uh, two and a quarter inches high from my bullseye, right? Where, where, you know, where, where the tip of the chevron touches the bullseye, two and a quarter inches high. Um, and then when I get out to 400 yards and, and then some, um, I got to, I got to drop some more wind ribbons along the path of where I'm going to be shooting um, and, and, and better account for the wind and make the proper wind holes. Okay, so, uh, so that's, that's the lesson from yesterday. Um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys found this interesting or useful, or just something that you guys might be able to use at some point for yourselves. Uh, but I'm, I'm very happy with uh, this setup, this, this Palmetto and this uh, Primary Arms ACSS. I'm actually planning to get a second one because this one came off of my Ruger MPR, which has an 18 inch barrel. Uh, that, that's, it's basically an upgraded barrel. That one has hit um, 0.75 inches at 100 yards, right? And when I bought that, that was like a $600 rifle. And some people have told me they've been able to get that as cheap as, as like $550 and $525. If I ever see that go on sale for $525, I'll definitely grab another one. Uh, but uh, I am planning to get another one of these uh, primary arms, one to eight ACSSs, uh, because I want to have, because this one's not going to go back on the original one that it came off of. And the new one's going to end up going on this one. Be and the reason is because at, at 18 inches, that's a pretty heavy gun. Especially when you, because this whole setup here adds like a pound and a half to it. Um, with the 16 inch barrel, this is not this is not terrible. I mean, there's definitely a little bit more weight there, but this is not a terribly heavy rifle. So that's why I want to have, um, you know, aside from keeping one on the other rifle with the 18 inch barrel, I want to have one on this uh, 16 inch because um, I think that there's definitely some good stuff I can do with this rifle over here. So, uh, all right, thanks a lot for watching, uh, and I will talk to you guys soon.